Now, what's your dream physique? Because if you're anything like me, you want a lean, athletic and capable physique. And you don't want to be slow, bulky and uncoordinated like a bodybuilder. In this video, I'm going to show you the exact five-step training routine I use to become strong and powerful while remaining lean and athletic. This is the exact routine I use to transform myself from video game geek to athletic freak. Now, most fitness influencers will charge you thousands of dollars for a program like this, but I'm going to give it away to you completely for free. And that's because I know how much this would have helped myself when I was just starting out training. And I know there are a bunch of you in a similar situation, so this is for all of you guys. And we give it back to you, the people. I promise that if you watch this video in its entirety and you actually take action upon it, you will completely transform your body, your mindset and your life as a whole. So let's get started. This is Sparta! Alright, so the first step is going to be the strength program. And for this, I've got a Spartan strength program that I've been developing through several, several years of trial and error and a bunch of experimentation. The reason as to why this program works is because it utilizes exercises that use the most amount of muscle mass. So these are the best for building raw strength. In order to achieve this, we want to focus on lower rep sets of proper exercises, proper functional movements that utilize a lot of muscle mass, especially when we have low rep numbers because we don't stimulate too much hypertrophy or muscle growth as it is but we focus on building raw strength instead. All right, so for the exercises in this strength program, you want to focus on big compound lifts that utilize a lot of muscle mass. And these are gonna be the overhead press for your pushing, the weighted pull up for your pulling, and the barbell back squat for your legs. These are the three main movements I utilize, but on top of this, you wanna add in a few accessories. Among these, for the pulling, I use what is called a perfect pull up. So you want to do properly retracted pull ups, even at body weight, just to emphasize that mind muscle connection with your back. In addition to the perfect pull ups, I also do some rows, mainly ring rows with body weight to, to focus on the scapular connection and to work in the horizontal plane, in addition to vertically, which is what you do with the pull ups so to balance that out. Then in addition to this, you can add on some weighted hangs, but I'll get into this into, into, in one of the later steps. For the accessories, when it comes to pushing, you wanna focus on weighted dips, as well as incline dumbbell bench press to get that upper chest and uh, the chest more into it as well. The dips also focus a bit on the chest, but a bit more on the lower chest, as well as the triceps. So as you can probably already gauge, these exercises are phenomenal for building your strength, but you'll also get an aesthetic physique from them. Even though you don't do the bodybuilding style approach, you'll still get lots of return on investment in terms of your physique, in addition to just maximizing strength. Now, for some accessories for the legs, what you could do is single leg squats, so the pistol squats and different type of variations like that. There are, there's a dragon squat out there that's quite difficult, so that's a cool one to add in and to train for. And these are great for developing the smaller muscles in your feet and to improve your capability, your balance, in addition to the single leg squats, where you can also have in as a great accessory, be plyometrics. So basically explosive lower body movements, such as box jumps, to really get that explosivity and power in those legs. Now, when you're incorporating these things into your strength program on a weekly basis, you can either implement this into a push-pull leg scenario or into an upper lower body split. Depends how many days you train per week, how many times you're in the gym and how long you want to be in there for. But what I'd recommend is either a yeah, push-pull leg approach. You start off with push, then do pull for the simple reason that you need your lats to be fresh when you're when you're pushing so that you have a better stability sort of base of support when you're doing your overhead press. You can either have these on separate days, so push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, and then a rest day, or you can do upper body, lower body split. You would have push and pull in the same day and you can superset them even. So you first do a set of overhead pressing, then a set of weighted pull-ups, overhead pressing, weighted pull-ups until you're done with the sets for the day. And then you do your accessories in a similar fashion. And then for the lower body days, you would do your leg movements in addition to a few other things we'll talk about later in the video. So it's a bit of an option there. You'll be in the gym longer each day when you're doing the upper lower split, but you'll only be there four days a week compared to the six days a week with the push-pull legs. So your choice, six versus four days. Now, in order to progress with all of these exercises, we want to focus on the Russian method. And what this entails is that rather than doing small stepwise progressions and 
adding on weight each session or each week as you get tiny, a tiny bit stronger and a tiny bit stronger. What we want to do is stick to the same weight for a long period of time and then do a larger increase in weight. This has several benefits and I'll touch upon them in a few different categories later on as well. But one of them is that you sort of mitigate strength fluctuations messing with your performance. So rather than doing pull-ups and do 20 kilo pull-ups this week, then next week you feel quite strong. So you go to 25 kilos for a few reps so you can squeeze by. The next week again, because strength fluctuates naturally, you might be a bit weaker and then the 25 kilos you won't be able to do any or like barely the rep count you're supposed to do for that day. So it really messes a bit with performance and is a bit tricky to, to adjust to, which is why the Russian method is a great system. You then do the 20 kilos for several, several weeks until you build enough reps, enough sets to move up to not 20, not not 22.5, not 25, but you know, 30 kilos and then to be working with that weight. Now for the Russian method, how you want to progress with this is they want to do three to five reps of three to five sets. So if it's the first session you're in the gym, Gym today you want to start off with overhead press three sets of three reps next session you have you want to start off with four sets of three reps session after that again you do five sets of three reps and then the session you come back after that you want to go back to three sets this time of four reps each set then next session after that you do four sets of four reps you do five sets of four reps then you eventually do three sets of five reps four sets of five reps and five sets of five so when you've reached five by five what you want to do is that instead of going back to three sets of six reps now although that is a possibility if you're struggling and finding it difficult to to progress with with the weight every now and then what you would do is go back to three sets of three reps but this time instead of for example 40 kilograms on on the bar you can go as high as 50 kilos for the jump or perhaps you need a bit lower so 47.5 and then you carry on from there when it comes to rest in between sets, you usually wanna just fill this out. When you're doing strength related work, three to five minutes is a good range to sort of aim for. But I'd say just fill this out, like get back on the bar or get back into the overhead pressing or squatting or whatever it is, when you feel that you're physically ready to do it and mentally ready for another set. As long as you've got those, you're able to push hard and keep the sets of high quality. Also, another important aspect is deloads. So depending on how you sleep, how you eat, and how you train, how intensely you train, you should take a deload week, so a week where you do either really low intensity training or basically no training every four to eight weeks. So if you sleep really well, you eat really clean, your diet's on point, and your training is intense, but not really intense, it's like, you're not pushing yourself to the absolute limit, then if those three factors sort of coincide, you can do a deload as rarely as every eight, nine weeks. And if your diet's quite shit, if your sleep's quite shit, and your training is really intense, then I'd recommend taking a deload as often as every four weeks. Now step number two is gonna be tendon strength. Your tendons are what connect your muscles to your bones and they're able to produce way more force than your muscles. However, a lot of injuries tend to occur because the tendons are quite weak and they're not able to keep up with the relatively stronger muscles and this results in all kinds of injuries, sometimes even the muscle just tearing completely off because the tendon cannot keep up. This is what tends to happen with people that take steroids. Their muscles get really strong really quickly, but their tendons aren't able to keep up and so when they're lifting, they end up having these massive tears and injuries because of it. So in order to develop maximal raw strength, it's important to develop the tendons as well as the muscles. Tendons also take longer to grow, which is why people end up injuring themselves because their muscles are stronger but the tendons are not. But fear not because there are several ways in order to train them. First, note that the Russian method that we outlined earlier on is actually really good for the tendons because rather than every week or every session even increasing the weight and constantly having your tendons have to adapt to more and more load, what you do is you stick to one weight so your tendons and your body gets really used to that and gets really strong with that. And then after a couple of months, you then do a jump in weight and then your tendons have to get used to that again. But you sort of, you have fewer adjustments so in other words, your tendons get used to the load more quickly and become stronger as a result. Now other ways to improve tendon strength would be to increase the blood flow to them and this can be done through higher repetition calisthenic movements such as pull-ups, push-ups, dips and rows. So these are absolutely great to throw in as a part of a warm-up or as a cool-down. Also, in order to stress the tendons and stimulate further growth, you want to pull and lift heavier than you're able to do with your muscles. That might not make completely sense, but 
There are a few ways in order to do this. One would be to do simply partial ranges of movement, so for example a partial range of movement with a deadlift, where you can lift way more than you could on an actual full range of motion deadlift. This is going to stimulate for better tendon growth. Another example of this would be, for example, doing a weighted hang with a weight you cannot do a pull up with. So, if you're able to do a pull up with 30 kilos, try hanging with 40 or 50, and this would also be great for developing the tendons. Another example of this would be to train isometrics. Now, the famous example of this is to do just a plank, but you can do this for virtually any movement. For example, just a 90 degree isometric hold, a one handed isometric hold, right? If you, for example, want to build up to the one arm pull up, and this way you really build up those tendons in your forearms, near the bicep, you know, all, all around and inside your arm. Last but not least, you can also do slow eccentrics. This works for virtually any movement, and a good way to implement this into our training without adding any extra exercises is just that whenever we're doing movements we're focusing on having slow and controlled negatives. Alright, step number three is going to be grip strength. Now, grip strength is going to transfer over to way better strength in pretty much all areas you can think about. With a better grip, you're able to transfer more of the power you actually have into the movement you're doing. So if you have a strong grip, you'll be able to exert more of your energy into your weighted pull-ups. You'll be able to exert more of it into your overhead pressing, even arguably on the squat where you're able to like properly tuck yourself in and then exert force and be a whole unit with your body. You're more coordinated and you're functioning more as a whole system. Now there are lots of ways to train grip strength, but some of my favorites include the following. So it'd be hangboarding, you could do a bunch of different holds and it's used to bunch in climbing. And you combine this with sort of an isometric movement. So simply standing underneath an actual hangboard and just pulling down for as intensely as you can for some six, seven, eight seconds onto a particular hold. This has absolutely great strength adaptations and absolutely great for different specific types of grip. Now the next option is to do block pull, so this is sort of like doing deadlifts but with a specific type of grip. Great for developing different sort of grip styles, you might have seen this in different grip sort of competitions. So yeah, you have a bunch of different attachments you can use for this, whether you want to have something that's a bit more slopey and rounded, whether you want to have something that requires you to pinch, so four plus one finger, or you just use your, just use your fingers on one side of an edge in a sort of crimp. A bunch of different attachments and a bunch of different grips you can try and train with this. The next exercise is going to be dumbbell curls and dumbbell extensions. Great for training up and building the forearms. Then you have rope climbs, absolutely beast functional exercise here. Not much to say about it other than these will really, really build your grip. And then you have climbing, of course, so doing some bouldering or lead climbing for the more endurance aspect of it. This is a phenomenal activity for a more functional body and for grip strength specifically. I also want to mention that it's important to remember to warm up your fingers and your wrists. So do a few different movements for this, some wrist rotations, some clockwise rotations on the ground, some finger stretches, some prayer holds. Just keep your wrists and fingers healthy in the process. It's also worth noting that grip strength is one of the first things that elderly people start to lose as they age. So to keep that grip strength and to not only maintain it but to build upon it is absolutely great regardless of what age you are. If you can see it here and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. So I see these shots, I see these sequences. Now step number four is going to be martial arts. And I believe that everyone should try this out at least once in their lives and ideally do this on a regular basis. I truly believe that skills together with bodyweight mastery and good strength training will overcome a size any day of the week. And yeah, being able to layer different types of skills, whether that be martial arts, be climbing, calisthenics, whatever have you, putting that on top of a solid strength program will put you way ahead of the curve. So this is a brilliant component to add in. For martial arts, there are a bunch of options out there for you guys to test out. Muay Thai, kickboxing, boxing, or different types of grappling, so judo, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, try out whatever you want, see what sticks, what you enjoy, but in the process you'll build a bunch of endurance as well as humility, grit, discipline, which is great for character development overall. Be water, my friend. Personally, I'm a big fan of jiu-jitsu and I train it quite a few times each week now. And I remember the first time I tried it, I mean, I was about 18 years old at the time and I got absolutely crushed and just choked and just armbarred and guillotined and all of these things by, by kids that were like 14, 15, 16 and I had no idea how to defend myself. And like for the first couple of months when I started going regularly, I remember having so many days where I thought to myself, 
what is what, what is this? Like, I can't do anything. Like, I'm being crushed. Like, I don't even know how I will ever improve at this. And I can't really see myself ever becoming half decent at this. But I remember just telling myself that, fair enough, it doesn't have to be easy. And, you know, it sucks that it, it, it sucks that it sucks this bad sometimes. But it's like, I really wanted to get good at it. And I really wanted to test it out because I, I really, really love the idea of it. And uh, not just the idea of or being a martial artist, but the idea of, for example, in my case, jujitsu, right? You have a bunch of moves and you have counter moves and counter moves and counter moves. It's like perfect symmetry. Every move has a counter move and it's just patterns of Upon patterns upon patterns and I thought that was beautiful when you know being a geek as a kid myself and liking uh, maths and all of these things it just fit it just fit really nice for me so I said to myself that okay it doesn't matter that you suck at it now just keep showing up that's all you really have to do and you'll improve and sure I had a bunch of sessions where it was tough and especially like the mindset parts of it where it's like you're sitting there and you're really questioning what you're doing when you're going for like months and you feel like you're stuck in the mud but eventually I improved and um, you know I wouldn't wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I absolutely love it. It's been a good journey so far. I'm getting better and better and better, you know, slowly but surely. And it's a great activity to have in your life. It's great for building that character, building grit, the discipline, heart, you know, building all of these brilliant attributes within you in addition to brilliant endurance. I've never been as tired as I was the first couple of times I went to jujitsu. So yeah, find yourself a martial art and try it out. You won't regret it. Eat real food. Wake the fuck up. This is fucking sugary shit. Wake the fuck up. Okay, step number five is going to be diet plan or meal plan. For this, the biggest thing I can tell you is to just eat real food. Personally, I have a preference for going a bit lower carb and mostly I stick to potatoes, sweet potatoes and rice for my carbohydrates. I think pasta, like spaghetti, is an absolute scam and I think like bread... Yeah, not not as bad, but it's just don't really need it. So I prefer like to stick to like different types of potatoes and rice. Then eat meat, eat red meat, don't shy away from that. Eat eggs, eat your fruits, eat your eat your vegetables, all of these things. To be fair, oats as well for for your carbs, pretty all right. And during times when you're doing a bunch of training, you have many hours in the gym, many hours on the mats, many hours on the climbing wall. You want to be consuming a bit of carbohydrates. At least that's what I found. It helps me with performance. But I'm not a big fan of just loading up on a bunch of junk. So try to keep it as clean as possible. Another thing is that you want to drink lots of water. Water is your best friend with this, like cut out the sodas, cut out the energy drinks. At least try to avoid it as much as possible because it's really just chemical shit you don't need or want in your body to be honest. Also for caffeine, try to keep it relatively limited. Personally, I don't drink any coffee. Occasionally I do drink some tea, but make sure you're just not completely addicted to caffeine. You want to function without it and train properly and live your life without all the caffeine in your system. Now, if you're struggling to eat healthily and you find it difficult to stick to these good food items at least remember the 80 20 principle try to have it so that 80 percent of what you eat is good quality food and then 20 percent of it is you know your cheap meals or your cheap days you know your, your shit food the stuff you don't really want to be eating but you know or you, you want to be eating it but you don't want to be eating it, you know what i mean in the short term you want to be eating it, in the long term you don't really want it any near your body anywhere near your body don't stand near me son you got your mouth washed muddled up with cat piss it is what it is, 80-20, try to stay within that. Another thing is also that once several of these pieces fit together, like once you have discipline in other areas of your life, it's quite easy to have it with your, your diet and food as well. Often it's like how you do one thing is how you do everything. So yeah, it helps to, you know, therefore have all the other steps in place as well, right? A proper training program for your strength, your tendons, your grip training. To have all of these things in place, your martial arts, right? And to set up not just a diet plan, not just a meal plan, but to have like a whole lifestyle around this because then, then it's way easier to support the entire thing. Also, if you don't want to be eating shit, don't have shit in the house, keeping things that are bad for you and that you're not supposed to eat in the vicinity of you, like just anywhere in your house, is an absolute no-go because eventually your environment will win over your willpower. Eventually on a long enough timeline, it will always do so. That's just how it works. So set up your environment to work for you as opposed to against you and then a good couple of ways to maintain weight i mean this is a bit of a touchy subject so you know experiment with things at your own discretion these are not things you're supposed to do whatever have you all i am is a guy that has experimented a bunch with his diet his training practices and these are the things that have worked for me you can consider trying them out yourself at your own risk but anyways the things i do in terms of maintaining weight is fasting so i don't really eat until 12 1 p.m and then i have a bigger meal sort of uh, dinner around 
8, usually 7, 8 p.m. Depends how I train, depends on when I have things lined up in my schedule, but I'll have usually those two meals each day. Alternatively, you could wake up, have a big meal, then have your next meal around 1, 2, 3, 4 p.m. and then not eat for the rest of the day. There are other approaches to this as well, people eating only one meal a day or different systems like that, but for me, I find that two meals a day works pretty darn well. Now, some more tips for this would simply be to eat more vegetables, need more berries, these types of things. So these things that are low on calories, we have a lot of volumes, you fill your stomach up and it also takes longer to eat because you have more volume food. At least it tends to be so. If not, use a smaller fork, smaller spoon that actually works as well. And by doing so, you, you let your brain realize you're actually hungry, like your stomach fills up and you realize that, oh, I've eaten what I wanted to eat. Like I'm hungry, I'm satiated, I'm done. Instead of you just yapping zapping through your meal and then you know you haven't even realized you're not hungry anymore but you've just kept on eating and overeating and lastly you could do something that's a bit you know controversial even more so but that's like cocking your appetite so if you're really trying to like maintain a particular weight you're trying to drop weight for a particular reason then what you could do is before you have your meal you eat a bit of protein or you drink some caffeine or have something like this simply cock your appetite so that you get less hungry for when you have the actual meal so 100 grams of chicken or something before you're supposed to to eat your main meal and you'll be less hungry for for the main meal and these are some strategies try them out at your own discretion but i'm telling you what i've tried what i've what i've done what i've experimented with so so there you have it and yeah, when it comes to diets, I mean, there are a bunch of diets you could test out. Keto, carnivore, pescatarian, vegan, vegetarian, look, there are a bunch of different diets out there. But personally, I believe that no diet should be forever, right? You should be cycling on and off, depending on how you want to train and how you want to generally perform. So what I like to do is I, I do a diet or a sort of meal plan and I stick to it for a good couple of weeks or even a month or two. And then I do a week or two off. And then I come back either to the same meal plan or I tweak it up a bit depending on what I want for the next sort of training cycle. Bunch of options there as well, right? But you don't have to go for a complete branded package, keto or carnivore or any of these things. Simply eat real food, drink water, stay away from the, the energy drinks, the sodas, just all of the stuff you really know is bad for you. Eat mostly healthy food and you'll see great results. So to sum all of that up, for a little conclusion here at the end, for step number one, incorporate weighted pull-ups, overhead press and back squat with some other accessories of your choice. So perfect pull-up, some weighted hangs, some rows, some dips, some dumbbell, incline bench press, some single leg squats, some plyometrics, follow the Russian progression method, train four or six times per week, you know, push ball legs versus upper lower split, three to five sets of three to five reps for the progressions, rest three to five minutes, but you know, however long you need to replenish your mental and your physical sort of stores so that you're ready to go back up for another proper set also remember deloads depending on how well you sleep you eat and you train you should be taking deload every four to eight weeks more often if your sleep's not on point and if your diet's all trash and you're really training intensely or like you're really fatigued after your workout more rarely if you're eating really well you're sleeping really well and your training's good but not incredibly intense to the point where you're really really worn out outside of the gym most of the week so there you have it that's a spartan program for step number one and for step number two with improving tendon strength what you want to focus on is implementing pull-ups push-ups dips and rows into your warm-ups you want to be strict with techniques and do slow negatives and incorporate a few sets of weighted hangs or heavy partials for example a heavy partial deadlift or isometric movements each week a couple of sets of those each week will give you quite good benefits on the tendon strengthening front now for step number three this is all about grip strength so I would recommend that you go bordering at least once per week but if you don't want to do that at least add a few sets of rope climbs block pulls or hangboard movements into your training program along with some forearm dumbbell curls and extensions also remember to take care of your wrists and your fingers so do some warm-up drills and some mobility movements for those as well now for step number four this is martial arts i'd recommend that you find some martial arts and practice it at least once per week now this is great for mindset and character as well as endurance and learning to defend yourself now for step number five, the diet plan or the meal plan, here it comes down to eating proper good foods, foods that you know are good for you, healthy, proper, real foods, and drinking water. If you can do those things, you're already doing better than most people out there. If you can pair this up with some fasting, sometimes some fasted workouts, that would be great as well. Just make sure that you've got enough fuel to actually push you through your workouts and that you can perform adequately. Also, as a final step, make sure to get adequate rest. Otherwise, you'll struggle to see results, even if all other things are executed properly. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. Now, if you want to take your performance to the next level, you want to have a personalized training program just for you, you want to take your weighted pull-ups, your overhead presses to the next level, 
people, you want to unlock crazy calisthenic skills such as the one arm pull up, the muscle up, and similar to these, you want to improve your functionality in all of these aspects. Consider clicking the link in the description down below and book a free 15 minute consultation call where we can see if we're a good fit working together and to just address your goals your plans, your expectations for the future, and to see if we can put together a good strategy for you. If that sounds exciting, click the link down in the description. And as always, remember to keep on training, train what you love. If you liked the video, guys, consider giving it a like down below. Comment if you have some other video ideas, or if there is something you're curious or uncertain about from this video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.